is about various developmental research designs. The recap of previous class is, there are six principles of Baltes' lifespan developmental approach. They are, development is lifelong, development involves both gain and loss, the relative influences of biology and culture shift over the lifespan, development involves a changing allocation of resources, development is modifiable, development is influenced by the historical and cultural context. The learning objective of today's session is to enable students to understand how do developmental scientists study people and what are the advantages and disadvantages of each research methods. The session outcome is students would understood the common research designs used to study age-related development. Various developmental research designs are longitudinal study, cross-sectional study, sequential study, and microgenetic study. The longitudinal study. In a longitudinal study, researchers study the same person or persons more than once, sometimes years apart and sometimes over decades. They may measure a single characteristic such as a vocabulary size, height or aggressiveness or they may look at several aspects of development to find out the relationship among them. The advantage of this method is longitudinal research by repeatedly studying the same people can track individual patterns of continuity and change. It avoids confounding developmental effects with effects of cohort membership. However, a longitudinal study done on one cohort may not apply to another. The disadvantages are longitudinal studies generally are more time consuming and expensive than cross-sectional studies. Another problem is attrition. That means participants may die, move away, or they may drop out from the study. Also, longitudinal samples tend to be biased. Those who stay with the study tend to have above average intelligence and socioeconomic status. Finally, the results can be affected by repeated testing. Participants may do better in later tests because of familiarity with test procedures. Next is the cross-sectional study. In a cross-sectional study, people of different ages are assessed at one time. For example, in one cross-sectional study, researchers asked three-year, four-year, six-year and seven-year-old about the state of, one's, of someone's mind. There was a striking increase with age in the children's awareness of mental processes. These findings strongly suggest that as children become older, their understanding of mental processes improves. The advantages of this method is cross-sectional research includes speed and economy, that is data can be gathered fairly quickly from large number of people and since participants assist only once, there is no problem of attrition or repeated testing. The disadvantages are cross-sectional study overlook individual differences by focusing on group averages. Their major disadvantage, however, is that cohort differences may affect the results. Cross-sectional studies are sometimes interpreted as yielding information about developmental changes but this interpretation may be misleading. Next is the sequential study. It is a study design that combined cross-sectional and longitudinal techniques. 
it is a complex strategy designed to overcome the drawbacks of longitudinal and cross-sectional research. Researchers may assess a cross-sectional sample on two or more occasions to find out how members of each age cohort have changed. This procedure permits researchers to separate age-related changes from cohort effects. Another sequential design consists of a sequence of overlapping longitudinal studies running concurrently but starting one after another. The advantages are this design allows researchers to compare individual differences as well as developmental change. A combination of cross-sectional and longitudinal sequences can provide a more complete picture of development than would be possible with longitudinal or cross-sectional research alone. The major drawback of sequential study involve time, effort and complexity. Sequential designs require large number of participants and the collection and analysis of huge amounts of data over a period of years. Next is the microgenetic study. It is a study design that allows researchers to directly observe change by repeated testing over a short time. Vygotsky used the term called microgenesis experiments in which he manipulated conditions to see how much children's performance could be improved over a short period of time. To summarize this session, the two most common designs used to study age-related development are longitudinal and cross-sectional. Longitudinal study describe continuity or change in the same participant. Cross-sectional studies compare age groups. Sequential study combines cross-sectional and longitudinal study. Microgenetic study allows direct observation of change over a short period of time. Thank you.